on Vista, whereas on XP and down level systems, you have to wait for the open to time out because there's no way to cancel an open operation in the IO stack oh. prior to Vista and Server 2008. Nice. Uh, also in IO, there's uh, scalability improvements in uh, feature or uh, component technology called IO completion ports, where because of the way I completion port processing is handled on server 2008, it minimizes the number of context switches on heavy network server workloads. Okay. Um, there's well, there's, there's way more. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, those are, those are the big ones, and you can find out exactly every single detail by probably reading a yeah. white paper or something. But one of the things that I, in my personal opinion, um, that really intrigues me about Windows Server 2008 is the notion of server core, mm -hmm. which is basically a shellless server. Um, and when you think about the, the way Windows is architected, that was a kind of a hard problem to solve given the, the interdependencies between what happens up in shell world and what goes on down in the kernel and the shared resources that could live in the kernel that the mm -hmm. shell relies on. So what did you do? to be able to create a server core? I mean, what, first of all, I had to understand all the dependencies and then pull them out? Or, I mean, the well, it's, yeah, the, um, that's a really interesting question, and, and it's also timely, um, because that's a big focus of what, we, what we'd like to do is layer and componentize the system. And I think when you had the Channel 9 interview with the core architecture team a few years ago, yeah. Rich Neves was there yes. talking about layering and mapping the layers and dependencies between different pieces of Windows. And that work is uh, exactly what the the engineering layering and dependency work that we've got going on is based on. Mm -hmm. As far as server core, that kind of being able to to def draw a line around a chunk of Windows that's not the whole thing. Now, yeah. it is a, a big thing. Server core is like 1.2 gigabytes in size. <laughs> so it's, it's a pretty wow. big chunk, but yet it cuts off a lot of stuff that you just don't want in this on your server. Okay. And the way that we figured out where the where to draw those lines to cut off is, again, using the dependency layering maps, identify the pieces that are connected to that core, that mm -hmm. chunk, break the dependencies where we can, mm -hmm. and otherwise just slice it off and analyze the, the loads that, that are going to be run on server core to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no dependency on that dependency. Okay. So that you're not running, you don't do some operation, you can't do some operation in server core that ends up calling up to this other piece that's not there. Mm. So it's not engineered uh, is isolation mm -hmm. of that component. It's more like analyzed and best effort, right? There's pieces, there are links off to other pieces that aren't there. They're just never exercised ah. with what server core delivers. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say it's relevant is because uh, Eric Trout gave a talk at the University of Illinois where he mentioned something called MinWin, and, yes. and there's a lot of confusion out there about what MinWin is and how it relates to server core. Yeah, I thought they were related. And, but yeah, and a lot of people do, and actually it's kind of unfortunate that the name MinWin was used at one point early in the development of server core, mm. and internally and in some public presentations like at WinHack. So a lot of people, when they heard MinWin again, thought, oh, that's the MinWin that was the basis for server foundation or server core, and, and actually the MinWin, the MinWin that we're talking about today is t something pretty different. Uh. And the MinWin that we're talking about today is really what Rich Nevs and Rich Pletcher have done uh, with the help of a bunch of other people to analyze the dependencies and carve out the lowest, smallest core component mm. of, of Windows what, that would be a standalone testable slice of Windows. Interesting. And that is really analyzing the dependencies and cutting the lines, the cycles, mm -hmm. from MinWin to higher level components, really engine, really uh, making sure that MinWin doesn't depend on anything else, that it's totally self-contained. So uh, it can be built separately from the rest of the Windows source tree and uh, can it run independently the Windows source tree as Eric showed in his VM demo. So let me ask you this, well, let me stop you right there and yeah. ask this one quick. Now, my understanding, of, so what you're saying is that the kernel can't run independent of the shell? I mean, what, what does the kernel depend on that's running in the shell uh, today? I mean, why well, couldn't I take so Windows when, kernel? So when we say the kernel, uh, the people, you know, the, the word kernel is used loosely to <laughs> mean a whole bunch of different things. And okay. when I say kernel minwin uh, being a kernel, that means uh, what I'm saying is that the kernel is uh, NTOS kernel. It's the stuff, the core of Windows that runs in kernel mode. Uh -huh. It's got a lot of support 
components around it that also run in kernel mode. And then there's layers of system level components that run in user mode but are still part of the core OS. Okay. And so depending, some people call kernel that whole core OS, uh -huh. you know, some people call kernel just the part that's in NTOS kernel, and then some people even call kernel even a small component inside of NTOS kernel. Okay. They consider that the kernel. In fact, internally in the source tree, there's a small piece called the kernel inside <laughs> of NTOS kernel. So there's a lot of confusion about the word kernel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All right. So when I'm, if I use the word kernel mm -hmm. around MinWin, I'm really talking about core of the system, and that includes some system level stuff. Okay. That uh, does, doesn't, in fact, there's no window manager inside of, or windowing subsystem inside of MinWin. Mm. So all the dependencies on that stuff are cut off. And so it doesn't depend on having user GDI, Win32K.sys, the, the Win32 the subsystem driver okay. in it. Excellent. Um, and you ask about how can we make, you know, why would that stuff depend on the shell? Well, you bring in some stuff on top of that, and then uh, that ends up bringing this piece, which ends up bringing this piece, which ends up bringing you know, shell wappy 32.dll and mm. Shadok views, two of the core shell DLLs, and, and you basically got the shell then, and that brings in a whole bunch of other things. And I mean, it really is a, you pull in one thing, and you pulled in the whole world, really, from a dependency point of view. Interesting. So that's, that's really what core, uh, uh, server core really is. You pull in one thing, and you've really pulled in the whole thing. What they've just done is snip lines, you know, slip those, uh, snip those lines with the scissor, basically. Where you still bring it in, but because none of nothing you're doing will ever exercise those lines out, it's okay. Excellent. Well, that's really cool. So, I mean, um, one of the things that's interesting about componentization is the ability to enable rapid innovation in various parts of, of the system. Mm -hmm. So, um, clearly, that's that's the big thing on your mind right now, as you mentioned, um, as Windows evolves. Uh, you know, but anyway, we won't diverge too much. But I'm really yeah. interested in the idea of the evolution of Windows. I've seen it for go through various uh, iterations. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about some s certain things. One of the things that was mentioned in that interview was fast RPC. Whatever happened to that? Fast idea? RPC. Yeah, like I said, that's what one of the pers one Who's, of the, I can't remember the guy's that? name. The uh, the very gregarious guy. Uh, in that interview. I don't know, he's been in Microsoft this is, forever. This is the one with Eric Cutts present? No, this was actually before that. This was actually, Oh, 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 yeah, I know. There so was the a Channel 9 interview with Corey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, there's a random one for you. Maybe, huh, maybe. Fast RPC. <laughs> well, I don't, there's a, something called Advanced LPC, which is in Vista in Server 2008, which is better performing That's probably local what I mean. procedure call. Okay, yeah. Functionality. All right. So that might be what you're talking that's about, and that, is, and that is in the kernel. <laughs> but I don't know without going back and looking at that. Sure, that's fine. Um, so let's let's get you on the whiteboard and draw yeah. out. Let's draw yeah. the kernel and its components and, and, and your definition of kernel. All right. I certainly take you as being authoritative on that definition okay. over myself. Um, and it's always fun to get technical fellows and architects up on the whiteboard. So yeah, let's just let's draw it out. See, see what we got going on here. Two thousand eight. Um, so well, you've got NTOS kernel here, and uh, abbreviated with NTOS right there. Okay. Running, uh, running in kernel mode. So we've got the uh, user mode, kernel mode boundary here. Yep. And that's just kernel. It's called kernel. Other pieces that you've got in kernel are other, uh, basically the drivers. So device drivers. Uh, you've got win32k.sys down here, which is another big piece of the system. And this has a uh, user and GDI components. User being uh, the window management stuff, and GDI being the window graphics related uh, functionality. So this is bitmaps and drawing lines and bit, bit blitting. Okay. Just be sending messages and creating windows. Then you've got the hardware abstraction layer under here, the HAL, and then the hardware down here. And the, har the hardware abstraction layer basically manages uh, the parts of the system motherboard like and, and CPU, the I.O. controller, okay. the, um, that uh, basically it acts like a device driver for the motherboard. Cool. And where does, where does the hypervisor live? So the hypervisor, uh, this is 